Scott, welcome. Thank you, Frank. Pleasure to be here. You are in uh, northern Los Angeles in the San Fernando Valley. Is that right? That's correct. A couple of questions to give our audience a little perspective of you as a listing agent, which is predominantly what I, you would be. Uh, how long have you been selling real estate? Uh, it's been 13 years. 13 years. I think about that. Yep. <laughs> and last year, uh, just give me an idea, how many homes did you sell total? Uh, last year, it was a total of uh, 46. Great. And I'd say pro probably about 75% of that was on the listing side. Wonderful. So you're a great listing agent. All right. Now, San Fernando Valley, very competitive market. Would you say not? I would, I would definitely say, say that. I would not disagree with you, uh, you know, whatsoever. And there's very low inventory. Yeah. Very low inventory right now. And then how many, um, uh, what is your average selling price? What's the median the selling average, price out there? And what is your, right. average? you know, the nice thing about being here in Southern California. So our average, mean, you know, median selling price is probably between six and 700,000. Six and 700,000. Right. Yeah. And what's your, what's the commission you get out like two, two, 3% on the listing yeah, side? Usually, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About that. Yep. So anyone could do the math on that. And Scott, congratulations. <laughs> now you've been Thank a client you. viral marketing for quite some time, but how long? Uh, I think I want to say maybe 2013. 2013. Probably about that. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. So, no, no pleasure. So this is not a pitch about viral marketing. Obviously this is a viral marketing podcast, but we're going to get to the depths of why viral marketing is working so well for you, Scott. We're going to talk about what you're doing to maximize the program. And then we're going to do a screen share. I'm going to take a look at your stuff and we're going to talk about how to recommend and make things better. Does that sound good? Okay. The that audience here is our current viral marketing clients who want to get better. All right. Or our listing agents. Okay. So back in 2013, I just want to ask you, why did you decide to give us money of all the ways that you could spend your marketing dollars? Right. Why give it to viral? So it's funny. I think I actually talked with you first in 2012 and I just, I wasn't ready quite to do it. The first time I actually, uh, you know, heard about viral marketing was I was actually at an event in Austin, Texas, and I saw one of your clients, Jeff Quinton. And so I actually emailed him, uh, you know, about like, well, who do you use for your video? Cause I saw what he was doing and I was like, Oh my gosh, that's ingenious. You know, nobody's doing that in our marketplace right now. And I could, I could obviously see the value of, of, of the product of a viral marketing. And so mm -hmm it was a question of like, you know, how I'd be able to ultimately incorporate it a hundred percent into our, into our business model. And, and you know, it's like everything else. Like when you first, when you first do it, you know, it probably wasn't very good if you looked at our first few blogs, but you know, we just did it and we just, we've been on a course of trying to constantly improve and get better and add things to it all the time. And thank goodness it's been a really big part of our, of our plan overall. So why did you like it so much that Jeff was doing it? And I'm actually gonna pull up a screen share of some of the stuff Jeff was doing. He was one of our original clients out in Ocean City. The guy, you know, earns over a million dollars a year for himself after expenses selling homes right. in Ocean City. He was calling out of the phone book at the age of 18 to get listings. <laughs> so he's been doing his whole life, right? Right. He was one of the first people that jumped on this. Uh, what specifically, what problem did you want these videos to solve in your business? Right. So for us, you know, most of our listings come because we're a geographical farm. So we're very hyper local. So, mm -hmm. you know, for, for us, you know, you're talking about a situation where I, you know, I personally throw out 2,300 homes a month. So, you know, in wow. addition to, to all that, you know, this supplements that because of all the people that we already know in that geographical area, it's a way to be able to stay in touch with them if you don't see them when you're walking around. And, you know, you're giving them very good information and valuable, valuable information that they can use because people always have questions about real estate. It's like between real estate and the medical profession, people always have, you know, questions about those two. And it allowed us to really be able to get out there and, and put ourselves in front of everybody and, you know, not necessarily talking about ourselves, but giving information. And so it just, it further cemented the fact that we were the go-to person or the go-to group to call when it came time to, they needed to sell or they had any questions about real estate. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's really the end goal. Let me ask you this, man. You've been through the process of like, you know, buying lots of buyer leads from Zillow and Trulia and generating lots of leads and yeah. you know, hiring these ISA departments. And you've seen all the different trends in real estate. Mm -hmm. But you stayed extremely true to building a database and door knocking on what, 2,500 right. doors a month? 2,300 homes a month. 2,300 homes a month, you knock on their door? 
right? Absolutely. Yep. Now, it, it was about three it to was, five hours a day. It would sound to me that everyone's saying, don't do that. Why do you do that? There's easier ways. Buy the leads online. You've somehow like combated like all these other ideas, but you've stayed tried and true to the door knocking and to the video marketing and not gone down other paths. Why don't you talk to me about that decision? Well, I think, you know, when I first started out, I think, you know, my mentor at the time, you know, said that you either have a couple ways of going about doing it. Either you're going to cold call or you're going to door knock. And I decided I wanted to door knock. So when I first started, I didn't have any business. Uh, so, you know, and especially back in, you know, early 2005, internet leads weren't really a thing yet. And so when I first started, because I had no business, I went door knocking for 57 days in a row. I had, I had nothing else going on. Yeah. So for me, like the, the habits were already built. Um, you know, even at that time, it was a good market. I wasn't really working with buyers. I could, I had really committed to the listing, you know, to getting listings. Um, you know, we never really invested so much in the internet leads because for us personally, it didn't make sense because at the end of the day, if you have the inventory and you have the listing, because what, con what, what commonly happens is, is if someone's looking in a particular neighborhood, whether it be because they want to close the family or schools, whatever the situation may be, they're going to be looking in that neighborhood. So if they meet you at an open house, your value proposition is much higher for us than as opposed to most other agents that just want to sign them up and get and you give them listing leads. Our value proposition is, hey, you know what? We constantly have listings coming up in this neighborhood. If this is the neighborhood you want, let us help you because we can find properties for you that aren't currently on the market. And literally in the last 10 days, we have two of them we've put under contract because we never put them on the market because we had buyers, you know, already looking in the neighborhood. Yeah. So again, you've already established yourself, you know, as the premier contact to be as far as, you know, listing to go in that, that one geographical area. Now, you know, the buyers know that, especially if they constantly keep coming into your open house. So, you know, now you don't need the, you don't need the buyer leads because once you have the listings, you essentially control the market. That's great. So many good quotes there. And it's putting you, putting you in the control of the market. I'm sure the buyer leads you get from your signs are very high quality, aren't they? Yeah, they're all, they're all very high quality because, you know, they're, like I said, they're already looking for something specifically in that neighborhood. And, you know, because we already were very familiar with everything in that neighborhood and that, in, those, in, in that area. So they know, you know, if they look at Zillow and our profile and what's taking place, you know, they, they know that we're the experts in that area. And as a result, people come to us. Now, um, so let's talk about a little bit about viral marketing. So you were out door knocking before and you've been doing this, I would assume, since you started, like you said. Right. Well, you said you needed a way to stay in touch with all these homeowners that weren't ready to sell. So I'd assume right. when you knock on a door, you're asking, can I stay in touch and asking for their email, right? Right. And we do community events and there's, you know, and obviously they, they, you know, they come by the open house. So we have multiple different avenues of being able to obtain their contact information. So, you know, in addition to sending out the market snapshot, we do the videos. And when we first did the videos, you know, we did the typical video of, you know, top three things to get your home sold in winter, why it's a better time this time of year than the other. But after about a year, there's only so many of those videos you can possibly do. We start, what we started doing is we started shifting to giving the, the people that watch the video, you know, really content value related stuff. So whether it be, you know, how the interest rates going up is going to affect them, uh, you know, talking with, you know, we did one with, uh, you know, someone who specializes in trust, why it's so important to have your home if you're a buyer in a trust and what that means for you. We got a ton of feedback and people uh, emailing us about that. So, you know, as a result, you know, we found that, you know, it's really important to give people value, you know, value is something that, that, that would really help them and understand what's going on, A, in the real estate market, or B, you know, a tool or an avenue for them to help them in their everyday life, something that they might be thinking about. Great. And what you can see here is I took a look at your, your video blog. So you serve a lot of areas. So we decided to title this the Southern California real estate blog. You decided not to go so niche in that to keep right. the blog more general. However, I've noticed you started optimizing your videos for certain keyword terms. Right. Uh, for example, you're going after Porter Ranch, right? right. So right. If hopefully a listing agent or an agent, uh, or a seller tries to find a good agent, you know, they would go to maybe YouTube, let's say, and look for videos and, Check you out, man. Scott Hemmelstein, Scott Hemmelstein, Scott Hemmelstein, Scott Hemmelstein, Scott Hemmelstein. Uh, you pretty much own the entire first page of video results for Porter Ranch Real Estate. Yeah, cool? it's been 
it, it's very cool. I mean, it's something that's obviously taken time, and it's something that Fire was has definitely helped us with in that in that department. Great. Yep. So this is what the video blog is, and these are what the videos uh, kind of look like. Hopefully, I have the sound turned on. You hear that? Be sure to hear it. Hey, Scott Himmelstein with the Scott Himmelstein Group. Welcome back to another edition of our video blog. You know, spring right around the corner starts on March 20th. So today, we're going to give you the tips to get your home ready for the spring Looking home good. market. Before we do that, good mind job. if you're a home seller? I got a little tip to get you some better audio. Okay. So you sound better. Uh, up on our website, what we started doing is uh, shipping all of our new clients a, um, a microphone. But it's not a oh, microphone. That'd be great. It's not a microphone that you plug into the computer. It's actually a little, it's a little lav mic, and it's an external audio recorder. So what I want you to do is you're still going to record your videos in front of your webcam, but you're also going to lav yourself up and record the audio right into your pocket. Love it. And you're going to send in the MP3 from the audio recorder and your video file, and then we'll match up the audio and editing. We'll drop the audio from the webcam, use the audio from the recorder, and you'll sound amazing. Yeah. No, I, right. I like it. I think that's a great, that's a good, a good idea. Yeah. So I'll send you the links of what you want to get on that. And then if you want to watch a video, we do our viral marketing show every single week now. Okay. I think on episode 13, I actually share how to actually use that external audio recorder. So if you want to watch episode 13, I actually go into and you can And you can use that at, uh, also, Frank, I'm assuming if let's say, for example, I'm shooting a video with my yep. cell phone yep. and and yeah, because because that's that's really where the difference. And that's and that's why I wanted to do that because a lot of people's computers can't necessarily process the good audio and and, and camera at the same time, so the mouth wouldn't right. match. So I said, let's just get them the audio recorder with lav. That way, if they just want to do audio, they can do audio for a podcast, or right. we can match it up to the webcam. But also, if they if you want to take your phone out and you're standing super far away, you want to get a shot, you know, we could still match it up in editing, so you don't have to worry about yeah. like a wireless transmitter. You know the little yeah, sleep on nice. movies where like it goes clap. That's how they match up the audio and video on movies. A little cool tip. Very cool. Yep. So let's get you a uh, let's get that good microphone so your sound stuff is better. I think that'd be really cool. All right. Yeah, totally agree. So you've been sending these videos out. We can see that the call to action. They can search for homes on your website. So you generate some buyer leads that way. They go and they can find out maybe what their home is worth by you know requesting their home value. Um, do you get a lot of leads this way? Yes or no? Um, to be honest, no. Um, I, you know, I, pro I probably get more leads of actually people responding to the video. By more leads from what? The people responding to the video. Great. The video itself, like the, the, we will send out a video and they say, hey, Scott, we might be interested in selling. Or when, I, when we actually call them and follow up uh, about the video. Um, you, you know, uh, usually I get more, I, we get more leads that way people actually interacting with us, you know, from the email that we actually sent out with the video. Cool. So let's talk about this. So we're focused on getting listings and the right. process that we took you through was we first exported all of your connections. How long have you been living in the area that you've been in? Oh, forever. Forever. Hold on. <laughs> all right. So yeah. we took all your LinkedIn connections, all your people that you have on Gmail, all of the people that you know, all of, the, all of your leads. And we, Send them a reconnect message to let them know that I usually joke you're no longer a secret agent and you want to keep them informed <laughs> about what's going on in real estate, right? Right, right, right. And then you made the commitment after we, we reconnected with your existing database with a reconnect email, which we talk about in the database, uh, the database official video marketing plans on the homepage of our website. You now went out and built a list of homeowners. You didn't right. buy it. You didn't, you know, spam it. You went out and knocked on doors and you started getting permission-based emails of homeowners. Correct. Why don't we talk about what you're doing right now to build your database of homeowners in your niche to build relationships with them so they hire you to list their home? How do you do that? Right. So like I said, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that has happened over time because they come to us if they have any questions. Um, so, you know, they may ask a, you know, a question, what's going on in the neighborhood, um, you know, they may talk about, you know, another house they may have in a different area of town, you know, they, they, they may just have questions in general where they may need a vendor. So they may need anything from a, a real estate attorney, a probate attorney, uh, you know, someone that cleaned their house, someone that they need, they need a plumber, they come to us for, for all that information. So that's usually how, that's one way we get it. The other way is just over time, we've done so many community events, whether it be the community garage sale, the shredding event, 
uh, you know, the turkey giveaway. We have an ice cream. There, there's a plethora of different things that, you know, that we do in the community that, that we're able to obtain email addresses and contact information from everybody. So tell me about the community events. How many of those a year do you do and how do you finance those? And how do you promote them? Um, right. So uh, and right now we probably have about five or six a year. The big one is probably coming up next month is the garage sale. Um, so that one we have about 50 to 70, depending on how many people register, actually garage sales taking place at the same time in the neighborhood. Now, it, never, it didn't start off that big when I first did it the year one. Um, we only had five and it's grown to where people call me in December and ask me what so the you're, you're leading the community to put on a big block of garage. Oh, it's great. And then we have about, you, in, 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 instead of, instead of directional signs that say open house, we have about 200 of them that have stake signs that actually say garage sale that leave from one house to the next. We have maps that get advertised in the local paper. Uh, we do online advertising, social media. So it's a great, it's a great event. And then the morning of, uh, you know, I drive around with donuts and orange juice and I stop by at each location and stop by and say hello. That's wonderful. And that's how you build relationships with all the homeowners. And that's it, right. Because at the end of the day, it's about building relationships in the community. Oh, that's wonderful. What else do you do? So you have the open houses that you put together in a whole neighborhood and you coordinate so they're all at one time and you get the right. word out on social media so everyone to come to the open houses. Everyone loves you for that, right? Right. And so, so, so when we email out, um, you know, um, I actually just shoot a video with my cell phone and you guys, like you've been great. Like we recently said something I finally started using you guys for, and this has really helped us too. It makes us look that much more professional by putting the lower third graphics as yeah. our logo on it. And you know, I shoot it with my cell phone and you know, especially if we have multiple open houses, I'll do 30 seconds in front of one, 30 seconds in front of another. And we put it together and we email it out with a photo of each property and a link to the single property website. And we get tremendous response. Uh, you know, we just did one open house, uh, mega open house event. Last Sunday, we had two open houses taking place, and I've been door knocking this whole week, and every, everybody in the geographical farm has been commenting about that email that we sent out. Oh, that's great. Good job, man. I mean, I just want to show someone where they can go through on your website. Let me do a quick screen share, where on his website, here on the lower right, it's on his website, you can go down and you can see all the topics that you published. Look at you, man. Look at all the content. <laughs> 40, 29, 33. You content machine, you. <laughs> and they're fun. You know, what? like, uh, you, you know, what? like I, I try to make them, you know, very related to what's taking place. And, you know, uh, like I said, now, you know, a lot of it has to do with just stuff that happens in the daily business, you know, thinking, you know what, the public should know about this. And this is something that, you know, that people really should have an idea of what's actually taking place out there, like what I'm dealing with on a daily basis. These are great topics, great headlines, man. So you can go through here on your blog. You go to stophimmelstein.blogspot.com. You can see all the video topics that you've created that someone can go through and take a look at. Isn't that great? Yeah, I love it. And, you know, and I think people see that. And, like, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you know, our goal is to be delivered to value-related content that can help them. And, you know, again, uh, really pretty much sure up that you're the number one person to go to for anything real estate related. So let's talk about that. So you have, again, I'm going to go back to building your list. So you have your uh, garage sales. It looks like you bring out a big shredder so everyone can shred yep. their tax documents or yep, right, you know, right. big trucks. So you market, right. come to the truck. You probably have your picture right. everywhere to come shred everything, drop off from these times. Absolutely. And that, Absolutely. Brings, and all the, you know, that brings all the homeowners to you. So you get to meet right. them and ask for their email. Right. And right. then, you know, in August, uh, in the middle of, you know, in the middle of summer here, we have an ice cream truck. So we give away, uh, we do it on three different days to, to, to divide up the, divide up the area. When I think about each time, we probably give away about 25 cases of ice cream, uh, you know, each time. So that's always a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. Especially the kids love that. And then we, in fact, last year we did it where we were going around and someone, a child was having their birthday party while we were doing the ice cream truck giveaway. And I gave away, I think I gave away like nine cases of ice cream to, 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 that, to that one family. And, you know, every time I come around, they're, they're so happy to see me when I come around walking around in the neighborhood. Oh, that's great. So I'm looking at mobile shredding trucks. You can hire these companies. <laughs> and then I, do, you, do, you, do you brand yourself around the truck in some way? Yeah. So we have like a big, we have a huge magnet that we put on the truck. Uh, and, and then obviously we have tables there when some other information that we give away. Is, and you're door knocking, you let people know about it. So yeah, we'll, get, we'll get the door knocking script. So I want you to see that you're bringing homeowners to you through the shredding truck, through the open houses. You also said you have an ice cream truck. 
Yeah, Where's we have an, the, rent one? The, the ice cream truck. Yeah, from the local com, uh, ice cream commissary. So we use that, and then, um, you know, we pay basically wholesale. We buy it in bulk, and um, you put in dry ice and everything, and we go around. And, and actually, like, one of our past <laughs> clients, one of our past clients uh, works in production, so he's worked for Disney and Pixar and all this. Yeah. So I told him what I needed, and so he took, you know, the proverbial, enter, the song The Entertainer, and he recorded my voice, like, you know, free ice cream, come and get it, free ice cream. How much does it cost to rent one of, these, uh, one of these ice cream trucks for a couple hours? Well, our, our actually company actually has a, they actually have their own ice cream truck. Oh, here we go. But it's, but it's, but it's, very, in, it's very inexpensive. They're not, well, that's uh, not bad. You know. Car rental plus 240 yeah. pieces of ice cream for 735 right. bucks. Right, right, right. So if you do that for the day, you know, that's, that's, that's a pretty good. Well, and it gives you a good excuse to prospect and knock on doors to tell people than just ask them right. to sell their home. Right. I mean, and no one's going to get upset with you. Hey, by the way, in two weeks, I'm coming around with free ice cream. You know, people are, but no, no one's going to, no one's going to be upset with oh, you when they, when you, when you come around. What else do you do? Give me some more events. Give me some more ideas. Uh, right. So those are the big ones. Um, uh, like I said, you know, we do the, to, you know, the annual Turkey giveaway, we do a food drive, but we do it in the middle of the summer. Um, because everyone seems to do it during the holiday. So and the, tur- so we the do Turkey during- giveaway, you just buy a bunch of turkeys. Yep. Yep. Well, what, what brand and, of turkeys do you get? What do you get? Uh, we usually do the, we do, we do the small fresh hens. Um, we usually got Genio or foster farms. I think are usually the two that usually come up. Right here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the chicken. Like this? That's a turkey. Yeah, so no, that's a chicken. Yeah, we have definitely the turkey, not the nice chicken. turkey. Here we go. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Turkeys. Yes. So how does that work? You just buy a whole bunch of these, and then you say, "Come get one," or explain that to me. No, we. I, I actually uh, we we have a van, and we actually deliver. I actually deliver them myself. So I usually do like like we divide it up over three four days, and I actually go deliver them uh, myself. So we pick them up from the supermarket and we go deliver them. So how many do you buy? And like, how many, how do you decide who you're going to deliver them to? Um, usually I'd say most of the part of like most people usually, if they enter, they're, they're probably going to win. Cause we advertise it as, you know, um, you know, um, Turkey giveaway extravaganza. So, um, but so, so a lot what, of people. What, what do they have win. to do in order to just call in and request one? No, well, I come around door knocking it at the middle of October. So I'll, call, I'll call, be coming around during that time of year. And then if they send it in, that you know, obviously I get their contact info. Oh, so you leave a little card there that says, if you yeah. want a free mm-hmm. turkey, let I, me I leave, I leave a flyer with a, that has an insert that they can mail it back. Got it. And then they mail it in and then you get the contact information for the homeowner. Yep. Oh, uh-huh. I'd pay a turkey for that. Yeah. Yeah, That's absolutely. Great, man. Uh-huh. Scott, this is good stuff. Let's keep going. What else do you do to build relationships with homeowners? What are some other things? You said you had the... Um, um, so, so, so we actually, over time, but we've actually given back. This is actually something I'm probably most proud of is giving back to the community in different ways. Um, you know, the, the community has been incredible to us and they always, it's, it's almost like, I always joke, like it's almost like an extended family because they always ask, you know, to be honest with you, like when I go around Frank now, you know, um, half the time, maybe two thirds of the time, I don't even talk about real estate. Because they, they know everything that we do. They get our mailers of Just Listed, Just Sold. They uh-huh. get our videos. You know, they see everything they do. But they get they it. See they our, know you're a real estate agent. You're not, you don't right. want to they, a bunch they, of they, 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 know we're, they know we're successful. They see our 60 open house signs. They, they, they know everything that we're doing. Well, hold on. So hold on, hold on you could, Go back to that open house signs. You said open, houses, open houses are an event. Yes. Yeah, open houses, houses are an event. That's an event. So, but you put that, out that, that's 60. A, that's a huge event. Yeah, and, and I, I actually put I, I actually put the signs up because I, I always get up early anyway. But I always have this this time of year. I'll put the signs up between five and six in the morning. Okay. There's no the, there's no sun up because there's nothing worse than showing up to an open house and looks like you just ran a half marathon. Um, you know, so for so for me, I, I'd rather put them up. You know, I can put them up in street clothes and and do it at about five o'clock in the morning. And you know, it's free advertising until the open house starts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, basically you got 12 hours out there where your signs are, you know, you're, you know, you're promoting the open house and in addition to everything else you're doing. Let you do that or is that just kind of a get them out and get them back? Um, so as long as you do it the same day, it's okay. <laughs> got it. Um, obviously, you know, some cities here in Southern California have different rules and regulations about that, but where we're located that it's okay. Cool, man. So back to charities, I'm sorry. So you start doing charities. Yeah, so for us, like, yeah, so, so for us charities, you know, it, everything's, they're simple. You know, some of them, I think there is probably about 
10 or 11, you know, in the geographical farm where, you know, gave, you know, $25 each donated to different Girl Scout groups. Yeah, so I actually pulled, pulled some of these up here, San Fernando Valley Charities. Right. And, uh, again, and, and, and actually the San, the San Fernando Valley Rescue Mission, that's actually who we do the food drive with. So this, just so people have an idea of like LA, because this is all over the country, you are in right. this area. So here's Los Angeles, here's Santa Monica, and you're right. up in this area, right? We're up, yeah, right, right up, uh, kind of like uh, if you go left of where that good, right where the 118 is, that 118 sign is right there about the, above the San Fernando Valley Dental Society. Kind of keep going, keep going up and up and to your left where you see the 118. There we go, like right, right to the family, the right went to the left of the valley oh, right family there. center. Right. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so we're, 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 we're kind of a, we're kind of like in that area. Got it. Okay. So here's all the different charities. So what do you do? You go out and you raise money for the charity? So, so what we do is, you know, like what I found is like people in the, uh, in the geographical farm have different charities that they work with. And, and, and so, you know, some of them, um, whether it be, you know, pet rescue or, um, you know, whether it be, you know, helping out towards cancer, you know, whatever, the, whatever the, the, the case actually may be, you know, like one of them, um, you know, it's a past client. They live in the farm, and he's the assistant coach at a volley for a volleyball team at a high school. Well, with cuts over the last, you know, several years, you know, they need money just to be able to play in a tournament. And so, it's, you know, for me, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to help out and, and give back and do things like that. So, yeah. you know, it's a, you know, it's a, it, it, you know, when you, when you're able. The nice thing about what we do is we're in position to help so many people, and when you actually be able to do everything from contribution. Everybody else looks after you like their own family. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So I think we've covered a lot of cool ways of how you're focusing on a community. You're bringing value to the community. You're building right. relationships with homeowners. You're not on the phone all day long, just dealing with a bunch of buyer leads all over the place. You really have focused on listings. And one of the things I want to share, just because in the world that we run in real estate, people that are watching this, how have you been able to stay so focused on listings and a community and relationships with homeowners without getting distracted by so many different ways of building your business now as it keeps like infinitely expanding it says of all different lead providers and whatnot to, to do business. Why don't you talk to me a little bit about that, how you stay so focused on homeowners and getting listings. Right. So at the end of the day, you know, if I have the listings, like I said before, you know, I can do what I want to do. I can control my own schedule. With buyers, it's a little more, it's, it's, a, it's a different boat altogether. So for me, I want to be able to stay focused on the path of being able to obtain listings. All the activities that I want to be able to do is be able to get listings. Now, during the course of that, obviously, you're going to be able to procure buyers, uh, you know, with your activities of doing listings. But at the end of the day, it's really more important that you have to stay focused being able to do listings. Because once you are able to focus, be able to get listings, then you can be able to control your schedule, like I said, and be able to do everything else that you want. So, you know, anything, you know, that is the number one core activity is to be able to obtain listings. That's what we do. That's why I do the door knocking every day. And after that, you know, anything else that you do is just a layer to be able to cement that on top of that. Got it. Okay. So you record your two videos a month. You come up with a topic that you think would be relevant right. for your community and you record it on your webcam, send it as it goes out. That's pretty straightforward. We showed you the blog and it goes up on the web and we promote it. But you also get the names. Oh, and by the way, in between all these events, you're door knocking. Why don't right. we talk a little bit about the scripts that you use and what do you say when someone answers the door? I think that would be useful to share. Okay, so <laughs> I'm a little unconventional, and, but I think people should know this. So put yourself in the, home as, in the situation like if you're a homeowner and I come by and I say, you know, hi, Frank, you know, just wanted to, you know, uh, you know, say hello today. You know, just wanted to, you know, who do you know that's interested in buying, selling, or investing in real estate that I can call today? If you use any script, anything like that, and you're going to come around to that, that geographical farm again and again, the probability of that person or you opening the door again is very slim because you're not building a relationship. You're just asking them for business. And, and it's, just a, it's just an unfortunate reality. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to like, if you went around and say, Hey Frank, Hey, how's it going? Great to see you again. Hey, just wanted to let you know that the house down the street just came on the market. It's 2174 square feet. It's the same floor plan as yours. They haven't put a sign out yet right now. The kitchen's remodeled, but they haven't done anything to the bath. I'll keep you posted on in the, you know, next month. 
So now you're giving them value related content because the probability of them actually wanting to sell at that point is not, not very high. And most often, most of the people that actually contact us, contact us six to eight months in advance of when they're actually going to be putting their home on the market, which gives us an advantage because that's six to eight months I have in my head to be able to find someone in our database or who we meet to be able to find a oh, buyer. And it adds home. value to your buyers. Like I got some pocket listings on what's coming up. That's it. That's yeah. it. But, but as far as I mean, going around, you know, I'll, I'll let them know like, hey, this is what's going on. This house just closed. You know, the house across the street just closed escrow you know, last week for 575, it was a three bedroom, 1500 square foot at home. You know, this is what's taking place in the neighborhood right now. Right now there's a month and a half, you know, of inventory, know your numbers. I'd say if you're going to do geographical farming, know your numbers backwards and forwards. You know, I'll say in 91326 currently, there's 53 properties for sale out of 11,408 single family units. Currently in the neighborhood, there's only four for sale. There's 57 properties that are under contract or pending rent. Oh, currently. Sound like you sound like an expert, so, Scott. So, right. So, so this, and these are simple things. This is like, you know, you don't have to be, you know, like I always joke, like, you know, the nice thing about what we do is, you know, I'm not fighting in Syria. I'm not in a coal mine in West Virginia and I'm not delivering mail in Duluth, Minnesota in the middle of winter. So, so these, these, these are simple things. And, you know, like every single day, Frank, I see in the afternoon, I see the mailman, I see the FedEx guy, I see the UPS guy. And I see the ice cream truck this time of year. I even see the Amazon delivery guy now. Like I'm all on a first name basis with all of them. And if you take the UPS guy, just to give you an example, that guy starts at 8.30 in the morning and doesn't finish till about 8.30 at night. And, you know, you can think of like, okay, well, I'm doing three and a half to five hours a day. You know, comparatively speaking, I know that I'm going to be rewarded significantly well, better than he will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything that UPS man is doing is time to the T. So they right. optimize the left turns, not right turns. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Right. And, and oh, it's the same thing too. You, you, have no to, you have to make sure you do trade. You don't get any yes. AC the UPS drive. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay, great, man. So I want to see for the audience who's watching or listening to this, do you see how you're so focused on listings? You're focused on the community. You're focused on relationships. You're focused on homeowners. You're using a lot of the events that you do as your reason mm -hmm. to knock on doors. And it's, an, oh, by the way, if you need help with real estate, I do that. But that's not the main reason. You're there actually to help the community. Right. And provide answers for the community. Right, right. It's such a great mindset. And then the business comes with that. Absolutely. That's wonderful, man. So um, with all of this, with the community events, with the door knocking, with the open houses, focusing on this area of listings, uh, we do give you with viral marketing. After these videos, go to your database to stay in touch. We give you the names of the people who watch your videos, which is pretty cool. Yes. How do we you love it? How do you use that information to make your prospecting or your lead generating time more efficient? Right. I think we, obviously there's certain people that come up to the top, depending on what they looked on, especially if they clicked on home value or if they're looking at the, the buyer MLS search tool for property. So I'm probably going to contact them directly. Um, a lot of them, it's very interesting that sometimes there are people that were about ready to list and they start going onto that and look into that information. Um, so you know, most of the time, I'm actually not surprised it's the people that are looking that click on certain different things. Um, but it just gives us an extra tool to follow up uh, and to be able to follow up and see what people, if they have any questions. You know, you guys helped us last year, you know, send out an email uh, of asking like what, what we could talk about, what other talks would people like to see. Mm -hmm. And I was floored by the response that we got by that. Let's, let's talk I, about I, that. I couldn't believe that. You, so you started with us a long, a while ago. Right. If I could redo what you've been doing and for any clients to listen to this, any future clients listen to this, I would create the ask.scotthimmelstein.com blog or something. And I would kind yeah. of rebrand everything you as like, ask Scott, ask me, ask me. I would be pretty Go good. Go here to ask. You follow me? Like the yep. whole theme of everything you do should be ask me a question, submit a question. In your videos, you should be saying, I spoke with this person. Here's the question they ask. I got this question through email. We take a screenshot of the email. We put that in the video where it says, this is the question I want to answer. Right. The whole attitude should be asking people, asking you questions and answering them. Something to think about. I agree. But anyways, but, the, but you've been doing that. I just think we'd be able to work that more in the marketing, knowing what we know now, but go on. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. So I, I think from, from that perspective that for us, for what we've been able to do, um, you know, it, it just gives us an extra two to follow up and an extra way to be able to touch everybody and stay in touch. You know, again, you know, it, you know, the, the blog isn't about us. I mean, yes, it has all our branding and everything, 
but we're giving something of value, like we've said so many times, we're giving information that's really relevant that can be able to help. And, you know, I think, God, I think we got like something like 25 or 30 different email of yeah. different blog, you know, different blogs. And I've kind of been working my way through, through them. The one about the trust that actually came from one of our past clients uh, who asked about you know, it. And what's so and then, great about that is, you know, you send out an email saying, Hey everyone, I'm looking to create useful video content for our local community right. blog. What questions can I answer for you? Reply back. People reply back yeah. to topics. You know, there's demand for it. You make that person yes. super special. You make a video for them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in fact, actually, I just emailed him because, uh, I, you know, everyone whose topic we use, we gave him a $25 gift card to Amazon. And, uh, That's and, a so I nice dropped off, and, and, and so, I, you know, I just dropped that off yesterday at his, at his parents because his parents live in, my, in our geographical area. Yeah. So we gave that to him. And he was, he was so excited. He, he says, you know, Scott, right now, he's just like, it's been a rough week. You know, uh, my whole family has, to, you know, been, been sick. But he's like, oh, you brought a smile to my face. And, you know, that, and he's like, thank you so much. I really enjoyed the video. So, Let me ask you this, man. Don't you find your job pretty fulfilling? It's, yeah, I love it. It feels I mean, like, it feels you, like yeah, you I mean, love you, you, real estate. And I mentioned that in the intro of the show. Is because right. you're so focused on real relationships with people and those little touches, it makes the job fulfilling and enjoyable again. Right. And because, you know, again, you know, like for me, the best part is actually going out there door knocking. It is the best part of the day because it doesn't matter what you have going on, whether it be work or personal, whatever, whatever it is, I basically escape that because I just get to talk and basically build, continue to build relationships with everybody in our area. That's great, Scott. And it's key that you're going out, not saying I need a commission, want to sell your home, can you want to sell your home, want to sell your home. You're going with them with a totally different script. I almost forgot. Did we cover that script in depth? What you actually say? Should we role play something? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, to, to be honest, like I said, I, you know, really, but the only thing I will say is, you know, I would say, Hey Frank, just wanted to see if you have any real estate questions this month. Just want to stop by and say hello. Uh, you know, and just want to see if you have any real estate questions this month. Now, the one thing I, I will say is, you know, quite often, even though they know it's me, you know, you're disturbing them during their personal lives. So whether they just got out of the shower, they're about ready to eat dinner, uh, you know, they may be getting ready for something. And so you have to know that you can't take it personally. Something like, hey, Scott, I can't talk right now. No problem. Just want to wish you, you know, have a great weekend or have a happy 4th of July or have a happy Mother's Day. You know, it, you know nobody can get upset at those things. And so when, when you do it, at that, do it that way, you know, you're just continuing to build the relationship. Yeah. And then you leave, you leave a little, the little turkey thing on the door. Do you leave something on the door every door you knock? Yeah, everyone. So if, it, if it's a notepad, um, like last month we did notepad. So I'll write, sorry, I missed you. I'll sign it and date it. So you leave a little, little leave away on every single door. Every, little note, every, every, every door gets, gets something. Just a note on that. Yep. Just a note. Yep, yep. That's great, man. Good. And then you prioritize your follow up with the people that watch the videos and they go out to your list. Let me, right. let me ask you a couple of numbers questions. So how many people would you say you add to your database every month from people that you're talking to? How many homeowners are you adding a month to your database? It's probably about 15 to 20 right now. A month? So, that sounds low, but they're very high quality. Right. So it's more, it's right. So the people that we're adding are people that we've actually talked with. They're not just internet leads. So the people that, you know, that we've met, we've talked with, and we're building the relationship with. Got it. So you're adding so, real quality homeowners to your database. How many people would you say total after all the years of doing this, all the doors you knocked on, how many people are in your database you're sending the actual videos to? Right now, I think it's about 1,400. But like I said, you know, most of those, you know, I, I started with a sphere of influence that was almost zero yeah. um, because most of my family and friends live out of state, even though I grew up here. And so basically to start the business to, from where we are now, it's almost about 1,400, I think, in the, the, the database, just over that. Yeah. And those are all homeowners that have real relationships with. Not a bunch almost of all of them are, all of them are homeowners. Yeah. yeah. That's great, man. Yeah. Good for you. And, and, and um, clients and whatnot. Good. You're a model of our marketing client. You're using the program exactly how it's. <laughs> well, you know what? Time. You know, you, you will appreciate this. So in 2000 and 2016, 2016 was an interesting year because let's see, I had surgery in February. My daughter was born in April and uh, let's see where our daughter had surgery in June. And then my mom was ill towards the end of the year. So my lead generation was completely off last year. And if it wasn't for the fact that we had viral, viral was the way for, uh, for me to be able to hold down the fort last year while I had to deal with some more personal issues. 
and viral viral allowed us to you know it's not you know I wouldn't recommend it but I had to deviate a little bit just because there were so many things you know moving parts going on in the yeah. personal life but the viral was able to be able to keep in touch you know with the people in the area and as well as you know our past client and database that allowed us to really kind of just hold down the fort until I was able to get back there and be back to normal at the beginning of this year. It's great to hear, man. That's great. Yeah. So let me ask you this. I mean, you're spending, you know, five fifty a month. Every month gets right. taken from your checking account to pay us, to pay the people here, the video editors and the writers. You see that money go through. Mm -hmm. How do you measure ROI or how do you think about it to know that you're actually getting a benefit from this? Like, how do you know what the return is? Is it something you can track? Is it possible to track? Right. How do you... How have you justified paying that money for so long to us? So the first thing I would say, you know, one, I come from a production background, so it's a lot easier for me to say, I know what it takes to be able to put those things together. And I, most people, you know, probably aren't equipped to be able to handle that and do that. For me, it's more advantageous to pay the 550 a month. And if you break it down, you know, what that is an hour, it would cost me probably more to do it myself and to find somebody who knows actually what they're doing and for me to sit there and train them on that. And yeah. if anything, it's, it's for me, what I love about viral, it's probably the other way around where you guys come up with a lot of different ideas for me to be able to, whether it be production on editing or something that I may not have thought of. And, 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 you know, um, you know, like one of the biggest thing is being able to delegate. And so with my coach, you know, one of the things that we finally started doing was I was, I was editing the Megan Opa house videos to promote it myself off my cell phone and being able to email it to you guys and you guys do it and you send it back to us. That saves us a ton of time. I can't, it's immeasurable. I mean, just that alone. And then that's where being able to send it out and what we get back from that. So for me, you know, I think it's, it's not just the ROI. It's like, what would it cost if I were to do this myself? Or what would it cost you to hire an employee to do it? That's right. Right. You know, and then you, you know, you, you got everything else, you know, you got workman's comp, you, you got everything that, in, that that's involved with payroll and everything else to have a full-time employee that does that and to, to invest in the equipment. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Why didn't you just go a little bit less expensive and do some of the other things out there that like drip out canned emails or is someone else's content or someone else's newsletter? That's less expensive. Why right, not? But, why, why us as opposed to maybe that? Right. So we actually, we actually use bomb bomb also. But BombBomb Bomb Bomb has actually a, a different purpose for us in our, in our business plan. You know, that's Bomb Bomb that, that fine, but that's still your videos though, isn't it? Right. It's still my videos, but Bomb Bomb I used to send out, you know, to, for, for a new lead that just comes in to send a video yeah. or to, you know, to wish, wish one of our past clients a happy birthday. You know, Bomb Bomb's great for that. Which is your uh, one actually, to one, your one to one video. Absolutely. But what about that's like right. all the, the canned newsletters and the, the, the canned things you can buy that some canned emails to your list? All right. So I know how I am as a consumer and as a consumer, you know, um, you know, whether it be email or mail, you know, there's so many things trying to go after our attention and I probably have the attention span as a consumer, probably a kindergartner. Uh, you know, I just, I don't have the patience to sit down around and read stuff because my, there's too many things going on, whether it be, you know, family or work, you know, and if, if it isn't those two, then I'm, I don't want to really do anything. So for me, I don't want you know, think of it as a consumer. I probably don't want to have to sit there and read, you know, tell me what I need to know in two, three minutes or give me something valuable. And most of the times those canned newsletters, you know, they have a recipe, they have, you know, this and that, but it's not really most new canned newsletters don't, I don't really think give you the value rated, you know, content. Uh, maybe if you were probably sending it out to your geographical farm and you were consistent with it, you were knocking it around, maybe you would get, you'd have a little more traction on it, yeah. but the videos are quick. They're instantaneous. They go out and we constantly get, you know, we constantly get the feedback and replies from them. So let's talk about your YouTube channel. I'm actually going to share my screen here. Okay. So I'm on your YouTube channel now. Is it loading? Do you see it? Yep. So I just went to Scott Himmelstein, went to your YouTube channel. Look at this, man. You did a very nice job. And our guys at Viral did a nice job. Real estate market updates, home seller tips, home buyer tips, home video tours, mega open house event invitations. So here's you inviting people to all the open houses that you've done. Isn't that cool? Okay. So this is your YouTube channel that has all of your stuff on it, which is great. And this is right. how I probably recommend you lay out a YouTube channel. Market updates, seller tips, buyer tips. You can even, even um, do a Q&A. Well, it's more just open Q and A for anything. You oh yeah, get, that's a good you, idea. You can be on life. Like you're a successful person to a lot of people. They may want to know like, 
hey, why are you so successful? You can even kind of go down that path with just some of your videos if you wanted to on like personal development. Just an option. We've got some clients do that and get some pretty good results with it. All right. Cool. Here's all your videos. Let's take a look at your views though. So I want to actually dispel a common myth. I'm going to sort your videos by views. And your top video has only had 256 views. They're so low, right? <laughs> but you're getting business from it because it's about who is watching the video, not how many, right? right? And the other, the other thing is too, is you know, this isn't the only avenue we put the videos on. So, you know, one thing that you guys do a really good job with, Frank, is, you know, Facebook likes native videos. They don't like YouTube videos. So that's why the YouTube, you know, we actually, you know, the videos are, you know, um, you know, my goodness, you have a lot of videos posted. Yeah. So, <laughs> so from, so for, so for that, you know, our videos are all over the place. Um, you know, several, whether it be, you know, LinkedIn, whether it be Twitter, whether it be yeah. Facebook, you know, there, there's a ton of different avenues. And I think Facebook probably would probably get more views than we probably do on YouTube. For Let's sure. take a look at your Facebook. So here's your Facebook page. So we post your videos up on here. Got some good reviews. Some of your listings. There you go, buddy. <laughs> and I want to see how they're personal. Not a lot of production value. You don't have to stand in front of a green screen. You don't need a fancy camera. We will up your audio, though, because we have a very easy way to get your audio sounded good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a good idea. Yep. Yeah, man. There you go. There's one of your videos. Just like yep. that. You watch it. One of the things I want you to change, Scott, do you see how your logo comes at the beginning? I want to stop that because I want to like hit them right away with what you're going to tell them. I agree. That's so what I want. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to say, this is Scott and this video, you're going to learn this. Then we'll cut to the intro and then you're back on. Okay. I like that. That's, uh, that's let good. Me give, let me give you a little bit of an example. If you want to pick some music, we can add some kind of cool music. Here's what I do for my show. You ready? Watch the intro. I just tell them what they're going to learn. I play the motion graphic and then I'm back on with some music. Okay. Watch. Here's your intro. You're back on. So I kind of do it in a show yeah, format. Pro, 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 production wise, I like that a lot better. Yeah, and this is very easy to do. You yeah. just have to give a little bit of coaching. I want to kind of give you a couple of tips on this, okay? So if we can get a little better audio, if we can say, here's what you're going to learn, cut to the intro, and then you're back on. And then we can actually have the music go through the whole logo. It'll look pretty good. It'll, it'll basically capture someone's attention faster, like on that great speed, uh, than having the logo play right away. It's something I want to basically improve with your videos to make everything better. All right? Okay, I'm okay with and that. You click it. It goes right back to your blog. And they go watch the video, get the, you know, click the call to actions. And we also write a nice little article that goes with it for you. Right. So you don't have to do anything. So basically how many, if you just did your two videos a month at this point, how much time would you say that takes? Not very often. I, you know what? You, you know what the funny is, right? I should laugh, but it is funny. You know, the more I try to overthink the video, the longer it takes me to do. The videos, the, I, I did a video one last lecture because I was behind on, I, need, I needed to get out the first video for January and I was just, I was really behind in, get, in getting it out. And I remember that I was going away for on December 31st for a week out of the country. And I remember I, I went to the office like 10 o'clock on a, on a, like that night. And I just, I shot, I had a nice, you know, shirt and tie on above. I think I was wearing gym shorts, you know, below. And, and I think I knocked it out in like four or five. I think that was the quickest I think I ever did a video. I, I, just, I just thought about it on the, way, on the way driving to the office. I was like, yeah, I got to knock it out. But, the, but more like, you know, it doesn't take very long. Most of the ideas I usually have in my head. And, you know, it, the videos go really quick. And, um, you know, I, I've been making a concerted effort to kind of get out of the office and interview, you know, have somebody, whether it be our lender, whether it be like we said, like, you know, we had a trust attorney. You know, we'll be doing a video next month with our insurance guy. We do a video once yeah. a year. And you just, use, you just use your phone, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a phone. I got a $7 tripod from Amazon. It's all you need. And uh, then for the audio, you use the audio recorder. Make sure you record the audio that way. It. And so yep. the audio yep. will match it up. 
And for any of you guys, by the way, that are concerned about video quality, like you have to buy some big expensive camera, it is not, <laughs> it is not true at all. You just got to have good light and know how to use it. So you'll right. start with the webcam where we basically interview you to coach you through the video, right? Right. But if you get the iPhone 7, so let's take a look. The iPhone 7 is incredible. Red video cameras are what, ho what basically Hollywood uses to create movies. So these are red cameras. These things are very expensive cameras. They're fifty dollars to $100,000 cameras to shoot movies like this, right? If you compare the footage from the iPhone 7 to the footage from a red weapon on YouTube, you can't really tell the difference. No joke. So the footage you can get on your phones these days is incredible as long oh, as you yeah. know how to use it and use the light. And then when it comes to the right. audio, use a recorder. We'll match it up in editing. You're going to look and sound amazing. All right? So if you ever need a video camera, use your phone. It works great. You don't need to buy some fancy other uh, video, uh, video camera. But we'll start you with the webcam. I like the webcam. I'm using the Logitech C920. We'll ship that to you to become a client along with the microphone to record your audio. And I look pretty good. As long as you're lit, I got a big window behind me, as you can see here. That's my window. And that brings light over onto me. And that's why I look nice and strong. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Scott, are there any tips that you could give someone who may be just speaking to someone that's kind of the edge and not sure about using viral? Uh, you know, why would someone not succeed at this? How does someone succeed? What are some tips? Let's take about two or three minutes. Like you've been a client for a long time. You're getting listings. You're, you're making money. It's working for you. What would you tell our clients or someone thinking about hiring viral, viral marketing? What do they really need to do to succeed or how should they think about their business? Maybe a different change in beliefs of how they go about and get listings. Let's, and let's right. So I think, the I think the first thing, it's like anything else in this business, follow the plan. You know, the nice thing is I don't have to reinvent myself. You know, this is what I have you guys for. And like today, like you guys are always here to make my product and make my brand better. So follow the plan, stick to the plan. You know, this is, this is the only industry that I always joke where you're rewarded for plagiarism. So, you know, just, just whoever your coach is, you know, and, and, and I drive my coach crazy because, because I come from a production. This background. is the person you work, work with here at Viral. Right. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and, and Lexi like deal is, is, is great. And I'm always coming up with different ideas. Like, well, how do you do this? Well, what about this? I saw this somewhere, you know, you know, don't just think about the two videos. Think about how it can help use the video you know videos supposedly get 135 percent more views well then you should be using that instead of generic articles to post on you know to send to people and whatnot you know people want people love the video um i get so many like i said so many comments uh, about it um from everybody from family friends uh you know people in the geographical farm so it just makes so much more sense that to be able to have that as an extra arsenal when today everything is about video um you know with today's technology and i think it's like you know if you're delivering you know, good content, you know, if you need toxic, that's what your coach is here for to be able to help you, you know, guide you through that. You know, when I first started, oh my gosh, my blog was horrible, Frank. Uh, I mean, it was just awful. Well, and, your first you know, video is the worst video you're ever going to make it viral. Oh, ever, ever. Yeah. And you know, it just, it, and I remember that my coach at the, at the time saying just, well, you know what, what you need to do is just go out and shoot. And I was, I was so concerned about minutia and you know, at the end of the day, just go out, you know, it's like anything else where cold calling, door knocking, open houses, the more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to feel. And I would just say, just have fun with it. You know, I actually look forward to it. Uh, you know, I actually have a lot of fun going out and shooting it. And, uh, you know, to me, it's just kind of just part of the business model now. That's great, man. So all in all, let me just ask one last question to round up financial results, because that's what everyone wants to know and ask. But right. We covered the depth of the iceberg of how you get that. But right. last year, you sold how many homes again? One more time. It was like 40, 46. 46 homes. Average selling price is about five, 600,000. Correct. About say, so $550,000. 75% of that was listings. Yes. And I would say for the most part, every single one of them came from your database. Probably. I mean, how it many, came, those, came, how many of those, would you almost, almost every single one of them in some way or form came from the geographical farm, whether it was a referral from a past client who came from the geographical farm, almost I'd say the majority of them came from the geographical farms. And, and the way that you're on their business, that's all in your database. I mean, how much business came from your database of past clients, centers of influence, 
or homeowners in your niche who you're staying in touch with? How much of that business was from your database? Oh, I'd say I, I, it, if they're in the database, I'd probably 100% came from, you know, people that came in that. So 100% of the business came from your database. Yeah. In fact, in fact, actually, you, you were talking about Zillow. You're like that we had one on, on Zillow. The, the, you know, the one thing that we actually invested in was video on Zillow. Now, I, I didn't want to buy any leads, but you could do video on Zillow. And so I actually took one of the viral marketing videos on Zillow and was talking about how to buy and sell contingent. And we put that up on, on our profile for, uh, for that. And we actually got, well, I think within one week, we actually picked up a seller and they ended up selling their house and, buy, and buying a house. That's great, man. So you put your videos on Zillow, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, nice. It's free. And you didn't have uh -huh. to buy any leads from them and you got free yep. business? And yep. it was a yep. listing? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, Scott, you're, you are winning, my friend. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, that, and that's the thing. There's always different places to do things. Uh, you know, it, you, know you, you just want to show your value more than everybody else. You know, everyone's so concerned about discounted brokerages and this and that. You know, if you show your value to, 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 to your seller, you know, they, they are going to be, they'll be okay paying what the commission needs to be. In fact, we just had one actually like in our geographical farm where there are a couple people came in, extremely discounted their, their, their commission. Uh, another one was a friend of theirs from out of the area. But yeah. when you show everything and the, the first thing the husband says is, Scott, I love your video blog. That's the first thing he says when I come in and That's he says, cool. I watch them all the time. Yeah, and so they, already, they, I, I, I already, I know I have a step up on the competition. That's great. Well, Scott, I think so. you've absolutely answered the question of how to, how to, wean yourself off the internet leads that you're yep. using fulfillment of following up with those as homes ownership actually is going down and leads are going like this, right? Right. How to refocus, work us on a focused niche of homeowners, how to build right. a database, how to provide value to the community through events, door knocking, right? Calls. You should be very proud of yourself and you have built yourself an extremely sustainable consistent and predictable business based around listings, which gives you control of your time. Which is at the end of the day is which, what you want, which is what you want. So Scott, thank you so much um, My pleasure. for being on the uh, podcast. And uh, I hope to see more great videos from you and to hear more about your great results that you're getting with this. Thanks buddy. Cool. Thanks friends. Thank you. I appreciate it all the time.